And we're live with Julie Spira, the online dating expert. Uh, seeing a lot of people piling in, a lot of attendees go joining us for her webinar on dating in the age of COVID-19. Um, Julie Spira is an online dating expert who has been seen on NBC, the Today Show, Good Morning America, uh, among so many other media outlets, and has such a wealth of information for people who are trying to date in a pandemic and who are trying to date, uh, you know, even, <laughs> even not in a pandemic, even after this is all over. She has great insight. Um, she has great insights on, on both aspects of dating. So I'm going to let Julie take it away from here, but I'll be helping uh, co-host and facilitate questions. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the chat and I will go ahead and relay them to Julie. Well, thank you for having me. It is so great to be hosting JWED Live again. We had such a great turnout last time. Uh, the Q&A portion was really a lot of fun. So really start asking your questions so you can get in the queue. We answered over 30 questions last time. So I assume that this will be quite similar and there are more questions as things are starting to open up. So hi everyone, I am Julie Spira. I'm an online dating expert who's been coaching singles on finding love online for over 25 years. I created cyberdatingexpert.com as a dating advice site. And we did a spinoff for dating in the age of covid19.com uh, to basically help singles how to date in quarantine. So get your questions ready and we're going to learn a little bit about summer love today. Now, let's see, there we go. So you can follow me on social, I'm at Julie Spira. And this is what we're covering today. First, online dating by the numbers. Dating in a pandemic, what's different? How do you handle it? Can you date in a pandemic? We have a bunch of 10 polls, some really interesting polls. We're going to compare this to two months ago. We're going to see where you are at now. We're going to perfect your profile with some tips to make sure that it really looks fabulous. Uh, we'll provide tips on how to master virtual dating. Are you Zooming? Are you using FaceTime? I'll arm you with some summer date ideas. People are starting to go out and do socially distanced dating. So we have virtual dates and social distance dates covered today, as well as the most popular Q&A forum. So grab your seatbelts and let's get going. So, okay. Who's dating online? Um, this is a really interesting survey that I like to show people. Let's get back to it. And this is a survey that was released earlier this year from Stanford. And if you look at this red line, it's this dramatic spike going upwards with the arrow. And that's about couples who have met online. Obviously in 1980, not very many people were. 2000 things were starting to brew. And here we have in 2020, online dating is now the number one way that couples have met, close to 40%. And oh, by the way, for everyone who says, I wanna meet through a friend of a friend, that's the purple line. And you can see where it intersects somewhere around 2012 and how it's actually 50% you know, less. So 20% are meeting through friends and 37, 38, 39% are meeting online. And that's why we are here today. So here's the interesting thing about dating in a pandemic. Everyone is now in a long distance relationship, whether you liked it or not, whether you were dating somebody who lived down the street or around the corner, uh, it's no different than dating somebody who lives uh, in another state, in another county, in another continent for that matter. So what's happening is you're not necessarily meeting, but you're communicating and you're having more meaningful conversations. And here's where technology and apps like JWeb help you because they help you combat this loneliness feeling. There's such a feeling of isolation that we're all struggling with right now. And just to have a pen pal that could turn into a more meaningful and serious relationship is you know, completely available. So we're going to back to this number one poll question. I asked this question in two months ago. How has COVID-19 affected your dating life? And I have an ongoing poll in dating in the age of COVID-19.com. And Zach is putting up the same poll right now for you to answer this important question. Do you want a long-term relationship more than ever? 
or are you interested in getting back out there and hooking up and having a casual relationship, a fling? Or have you decided to put dating on hold until this pandemic is over? We want to see your responses and then I'm going to compare them with the rest of the country as well as last, the last time we did this poll. Okay. So we still have some responses rolling in. 58% of you have voted. As of right now, it's a pretty clear winner. 15 out of 19 responses say they want a long-term relationship more than ever. Okay. And do we have that by percentage or just by, by numbers? 80% to 20%. Okay. So the last time we did this poll, by the way, the ongoing poll and dating in the age of COVID-19 also, it, everyone feels exactly the way that all of you do. 80.72% as of today want a long-term relationship more than ever. When we did this poll with JUA last time, we were at 77%. So in the last few months, more and more people are really focused on finding that long-term love. Okay, so thanks for that poll. Here's the poll question number two. How long have you been using dating apps? Time for you to weigh in. Is this your first time? Have you been on and off for a while? Have you been using dating apps for six to 12 months or a year or longer? Let's, let's see um, how this audience responds to how frequently they're using dating apps and how popular they've been in their lives. And we're going to wait a little bit longer. How are we doing, Zach, on percentages of people that are, po that are answering the poll? Right now, 65% of attendees have Okay. Answered the poll. Um, some people started. Some people started dating using dating apps for the very first time during COVID. Um, there was no other alternative to meet someone. Other people have been on for a few months to a year. Some have been on for over a year, and then there are those who go in and out of relationships, or they've been on and off for a variety of reasons for a few years. Okay, Zach, what's the result of this poll? How long have you been using dating apps? So 9% of responses said that they started using the dating app during COVID. Zero people responded and sa sa saying they uh, have been using dating apps for over six months to a year. 14% for over one year, 77% on and off for several years. Okay, so the majority of you have been on and off. Either you're getting into a relationship or you're frustrated with the process because you haven't been able to really find what you're looking for. So let's try and change that. And, and the best way to change that is by looking at the profile. Here's the thing about dating profiles. I look at them all day long. Some of them are really old and they have not been updated. As a matter of fact, they say, I can't wait to go on a trip to Hawaii. I have two airline tickets. Well, you're not going to be able to get into Hawaii, or if you do, you'll probably be quarantined for 14 days. Now, people complain that they're not authentic. People don't look like their profile photos. Right now, with everybody home and working from home, it's important to be responsive. So uh, those who take time and wait um, might find out that the person they were interested in is no longer available. So you need to be open-minded. If you normally like to go out with somebody who's a brunette, you need to think about a blonde. And no matter what, you need to be kind to whoever you're communicating with, and you need to take the high road, even if you're not a match. This person could become a new friend, or they might have somebody wonderful to introduce you to. And I can say after doing this for 25 years, there are several couples that I know, more than several, many, who are happily married, who actually were the friend of the person that had the bad date. So please do be kind on your dates. And in order to make it easy for someone, let them know what kind of date ideas that you'd like. If you're only virtual dating, put it in your profile. If you're willing to go out on, on a socially distanced date wearing a mask, state that as well and state you're only willing to go on hikes or list the name of the hiking trails that you'd like to go on for a possible date. But the more you can come up with date ideas and listing your favorite quarantine shows to binge watch, the easier it is for someone to have a date with you. And that's why we're here. So let's grab another poll, Zach. People have had sort of a, an iffy feeling about how do you feel about video and virtual dating? 
JWED's doing a great job now with video dating and they're making it easy for you to chat with somebody in real time, um, have a phone conversation with a face. <laughs> so I'd like to know how you feel about video dating. Would you rather take a pass? Are you not ready? Do you love it? Have you gone on video dates? Let me hear your responses. If you've gone on video dates, select A. If you're thinking about trying it, select number two. And if it's not for you and you want to meet, wait until you meet in person, select number three. So Al in the chat says he loves video dates and it's looking like um, people are, are open to the idea. If they haven't done it already, uh, they're open and they're thinking about trying it. Okay. That's terrific that you're thinking about trying it. It really is something that you should try now because it's an opportunity to really move the relationship forward when you're sort of stuck in chat. Um, and it's that in-between place and it's a really great way to vet your dates. So even when the pandemic is over, I really believe that video dating is here to stay and it is an opportunity for you to just hop on the app and chat with someone and really make it a fun date. So I'm glad to hear that you're interested in that. We have another question about video dating. Poll question number four. What platform do you like for video dating? I know it's new for many of you. Do you prefer using FaceTime because you're FaceTiming with family and friends? Do you like Zoom, which is what we're using right now? It's a very easy platform to use. Or do you feel safe staying in app and using the in app feature? And for those of you who don't use it, feel free to say you're not using it yet. So in-app, FaceTime, Zoom, or you're not using video chat. Love to hear from you. And how's it looking, Zach? Really interesting split here. Um, as, as the votes roll in, it stand, as it stands now, it's 11% say they use the in-app feature, 19% use FaceTime, 41% pr prefer Zoom, uh, and 30% don't use video chat at all. Okay, so these numbers are really interesting because 40% are using Zoom, and if 30% aren't using video chat, that means the majority of you are. And I understand that Zoom is an easy platform to use because you know, it's filtered, it's, you're using it for other phone calls, you're using it for work meetings. So people are used to Zooming, um, whether they use Zoom or not. FaceTime is simple. FaceTime is only limited to iOS, so it's for your iPhone, your iPad, anything that's Apple related. So not everyone can use FaceTime. So it's interesting. And the uh, in-app feature is fairly new, so play around with it a little bit. But the point is you're here to connect and you connect in whatever platform makes you the most comfortable. And it looks like Zoom is a clear winner right now. And I'd like to jump in and say that one of the greatest things about JWED's new in-app uh, video dating features is that there's really a, a privacy component to it that you don't get with Zoom or FaceTime because with those, you're required to, to give your phone number or give your information. But when you do a video chat through JWED, uh, all that's contained in with the app, in, within the app. And you're really just showing whatever you've already dictated uh, on your profile. So it's, it's really a great way to connect with people and um, it's a great alternative to Zoom. It, it's a great alternative because as Zach said, using an in-app feature, you don't have to give out your digits. No one needs to know your cell phone number in case the phone call doesn't go well. Uh, nobody needs to know your email address. Um, it's sort of that in-between place and it's a place where you're supposed to feel safe about being on a date with this person. So. Those are the benefits of using an in-app feature is the safety element and you know, you're know you just sort of revealing a little bit at a time and maybe you're not ready to give your phone number out. So here are some tips on how to master virtual dating. The most important thing is to ask someone, would you like to go on a video date? Uh, most people are a little shy about it, uh, but get it scheduled, put it on the calendar and make it feel like the same way that it would be if you were going on a date with somebody to 
a coffee, a coffee place or to dinner or to any kind of restaurant or outing, put it on the calendar. Just say, how's Thursday at 1 p.m.? You, know, you don't have to do it late at night, but when you get it scheduled, it's important to be on time. Uh, there's nothing worse than you know showing up on a video date or showing up on any kind of date and having somebody be late and not actually even text you or let you know that they're running late. So be you know be courteous about being on time. The other important thing is to check your lighting. I know this sounds funny, but you really need to do this. And I watched somebody go on a video date once where all the lights were off and it was really dark and it actually looked rather creepy. So check your lighting. I have a ring light that um, that I have to use this video chat and my ring light cost about $30. I got it on eBay and it's just something that, you know, I toss in my car and, and it goes with me wherever I go. So check your lighting and check your background. Before I got on this call today, I checked this background where the bookcase is and where the living room is. I wanted to make sure it wasn't too bright. I wanted to make sure there was no distractions. I wanted to make sure there weren't any messy papers around. But you only have a split second to make a good, opinion, a good impression. And when you have a bunch of clutter around, it's not a great, great impression at all. And you know, it's a very difficult, challenging time, but you need to arrive with a smile on your face. And even if you found out you were furloughed, or even if you, know, you had something bad happen that day, or even if you're not feeling that well, try and come with a smile on your face. And the most important thing about virtual dating is it's not a marathon. 20 minutes is the sweet spot. And if you go on a video date that's 20 minutes in length, your goal is, very simply, to put another date on the calendar. So keep it simple, maybe go on a virtual drink date, chit chat a little bit. If you feel a connection, continue it at another time. So I talk about doing a dry run. I did a dry run today and it's called the dress rehearsal. And what I do in the dress rehearsal is I critique somebody and I go on a date as your date. <laughs> it's really kind of fun. And then I'm like, you wearing that shirt? I don't think so. The stripes are too bold. Um, we come up with lists of questions. So you need to do a dry run. Know what questions you want to talk about, which means anything but your ex or anything about how depressed you are about the pandemic. Uh, nobody wants to hear it. Chances are your date's feeling a little, you know, down and, you know, in a funk about it as well. We're all doing the best we can. But go ahead and do a dress rehearsal. Whether you hire someone like me or you have a friend and you say, hey, I'd like to FaceTime with you. Can you just make sure that, you know, I look good in this red dress? And that really, really helps a lot. Let's jump over to another poll. And also, don't forget to put your questions, post your questions in the comments uh, for our Q&A section, because that's really, really um, very valuable. Poll question number five, do you feel safe going on a social distance date? And I'm asking this because things are starting to open up and everybody feels a little bit different right now. And some people are willing to go on a date if they wear a mask and they practice the separ social separation of six feet or more. Uh, some people would prefer to chat online until the pandemic is over. And some people are actually going out without masks. So weigh in on how you feel about meeting somebody in person for a social distance date right now during the pandemic. And I'm curious, are you going out? So let me know, have you gone out on a social distance date? I'd like to hear about that. So Zach, how are we doing with the results? Looks like we have a really safe audience. 62% uh, huh? say it's the only way they'll meet someone. 31% would rather chat online until all this is over. And only 8% said that they would meet someone but will not wear a mask. Okay, and it's a good thing this, these are anonymous questions, so don't be shy about answering them, but um, it's great that we have a safe group here, and it's interesting that we have a mix of people that are going on social distance dates and other people that are just chatting up and continuing to communicate and move the relationship along before meeting in person. Julie has an interesting comment saying she's been on a number of biking and hiking dates. What do you think about using about recreational date ideas? I love recreational date ideas, Julie. So thanks for asking that question. Uh, later on, I actually have a list of date ideas and hiking and biking are on that list. 
And the reason is they are considered you know, essential, they're considered essential by almost every state. And so if you have every health department saying that it's important for you to go out in the fresh air and take walks and go bike riding and, and uh, take hikes, then you should do that. But you should also do it wearing a mask and do it while you're feeling safe. I could tell you where I am in Los Angeles, the bike paths are pretty crowded right now because people are trying to get out of the house and they're going on bike, on bike uh, rides. And so bike dates are a great idea. Hiking, again, with your masks, a lot of singles are doing that. And look at these numbers. Most people will go on a social distance date wearing a mask. So Julie, I'm glad you're going out there. Um, this is a question that's a really important one and it's on topic 24 seven, 365 days in the year. As a matter of fact, for many years, the number one search term on Google was, what is love? So. My question to all of you is, do you believe in love at first sight? Yes, and it's happened to you before? Maybe, haven't experienced it yet? And no, you don't believe in love at first sight, you need to get to know someone in person. Let's weigh in and let me see how you're doing with these questions. Okay, and how are we doing with the percentages so far, Zach? Really, really great to see the wide range of experiences people who are in attendance have had, especially regarding love. Um, so 35% said that yes, they believe in love at first sight and it's happened to them before. 26% said it's possible, but they haven't experienced it themselves. And then 41% said no, that it takes some time to get to know someone. Okay, as mixed as they are, to all those hopeful romantics out there, over 50% of you believe in love and believe in love at first sight, um, which is something that can actually happen quite often online right now. Some of the biggest issues that I want to talk about are the deal breakers. This is where you get stuck, and this is where you have this list of things that you know you think are so important and if somebody is you know somebody's breaking one of these rules you won't even go on a date with them so i'd like to hear from you what are your biggest deal breakers the top ones have been in the past dating a smoker dating somebody with different religious beliefs or dating somebody who doesn't want to get married and we've got politics in another category which right now is actually a bigger deal breaker than dating a smoker, according to another survey I've done. <laughs> so deal breakers, would you date a smoker who could quit? Would you date someone who thinks differently about religion or do they really need to be on the same path with you as it, as it relates to religious beliefs? And since we're on a serious dating app for people who want to get married or fall in love and have a long-term committed relationship, how important is marriage right now? Would you date someone who doesn't want to get married? Take a moment and vote. And while we're waiting for some more answers for this, uh, Julian and Jennifer both clarified that they believe in infatuation at first sight. Ah, infatuation at first sight. This is where we can say, you know, we can fall in love at first pixel. Um, you know, when, when you're online, people are obviously, you know, representing the best versions of themselves. And the need to love is so strong, which is why I asked that question, that so many people are in love with love and the idea of love. And they start to define the relationship with somebody online that they've actually never met yet. So yes, infatuation plays a big role in this. And I love infatuation, but there comes a point in time where you need to be with that person and make sure that your values are the same and that you're on the same path. So um, we don't want to uh, go fast forward too quickly. Okay, how are these results? So they're looking like the results of uh, an app who is <laughs> for people who are seeking meaningful relationships. And that means that 40%, the majority said that dating someone who doesn't want to get married is the biggest deal breaker to them. Coming in second is dating a smoker at 32%. Third is dating someone with different religious beliefs, 
20% and only 8% said that dating someone with different political beliefs would be the biggest deal breaker to them. Well, this is, this is really refreshing. It's a great group. We can see people are serious. They know what they're looking for and that's why they're here today. So that's, that's a great poll result. Um, so the smokers can quit. <laughs> that's what I say. Okay. Another question. Are you willing to date someone who lives far away? When I first hopped on this webinar, I said that everybody is in a long distance relationship now. What about someone who's geographically undesirable, wrong zip code? So would you let, are you the person who won't let geography get in the way of love? When it's safe to travel, you'll hop on an airplane and go cross country? Are you not interested in dating someone who's a GU, wrong side of town, too far away? Are you open to dating somebody in a long distance relationship, but you know, would rather meet somebody locally? Those are the choices and I'd love to hear your votes. It's interesting, I once had a client who said she wouldn't date anybody that lived more than five miles from her. I mean, the airport was more than five miles from her and she had no problem driving to the airport, flirting with guys at the terminal. So I think we get these numbers stuck in our head and we need to you know, really review those and kind of revisit these deal breakers. So for this group, I mean, there are so many people that you're chatting with that don't live in your city. They live all across the country. Some of them live in a different country. So I know from just watching your chats that you're chatting with people that aren't your neighbors. So let me see how you've answered this. So Cheryl actually asked a really topical question on this. And her question is, this pandemic will be with us for a long, long time, maybe two years or more. What do you suggest we should do to meet someone who lives far away, perhaps in two different countries away and the border is closed and will likely not open up for a long time? This is a really challenging question. Thank you for asking it, Cheryl. So here's the situation. I mean, even the United States and Canada, I know someone who lives in Toronto and her boyfriend of 10 years lives in Chicago and they have not seen each other since March and they're used to traveling a lot. So uh, this is why everybody's in a long distance relationship. And yes, you might not be able to see somebody. We don't know when the borders are opening. We don't know when it's going to be safe to go to another country. Does that mean you should just dismiss somebody who you really feel like you have a connection with because they're in another country? No, you don't dismiss it, but you spend a lot of time on video dates. You make sure that there's continuity in the relationship. You chat with each other every day and you talk about your dreams and your goals and actually you can just make a bucket list of where would you go and what would you do the day you finally got to see each other for the first time. So your poll here, the way you've answered it is, oh, how refreshing. 63% say that you're open to a long distance relationship. You would prefer somebody locally. I know it's easier to meet, uh, but 22% said they won't let geography get in the way in the love. love and um, you're very open-minded. Coming in the last place was people that would not date somebody who's geographically undesirable. Very refreshing. So, you know, don't worry about the zip codes. Make sure that you have a lot in common. And now we're going to go to the heated, heated topic of politics. It's become the number one deal breaker for many couples. How important is it to you? You know, there's conventions going on, there'll be debates going on. We're in an election year. And these are anonymous, so you do not need to let us know um, who you're voting for. You can feel comfortable voting and, and saying which side of the aisle you're on. We have, uh, you know, the Republican convention next week. We have the Democratic convention this week. Um, is it important for you to be with a Trump supporter? Many of you will say yes, many of you will say no. Is it important for you to be supporting Joe Biden, the Democratic ticket. Is it not important? Are you willing to date across party lines? Do you wanna have a lively debate with your partner about political issues? Or is this an off limits subject? You will not discuss, discuss politics on a date. And I know many of you say, please don't put it in my profile. I don't want anybody to know how I feel politically. 
So how important is politics to this group? How are we doing on the results, Zach? It's looking like a pretty clear split. Um, still some votes rolling in, but initially, I, I, feel, I feel like I'm announcing the winner of the uh, election here. <laughs> um, initially, 41% say it's not very important to them and that they're willing to date across party lines. 45% now. Next, 31% think it's very important and that their partner must support Joe Biden. Um, coming in third is 17% 17, 17 of answers said that they won't discuss politics on a date at all. And then 7% said it's very important and their partner must support President Trump. Okay. This is an interesting snapshot during, you know, the election campaign right now. We're, we're, in, we're seeing it in the news every single day, something politically about the days, the countdown to the election. Uh, it's important to voice your opinion and to vote. And again, this was anonymous, but it's very interesting how many of you are willing to date across party lines. Okay. Now let's roll back to summer date ideas. You know, the days are longer. We've got some heat waves going on, uh, dog days of summer. A lot of you are going on social distance dates as we saw from the poll results before. Um, hiking and bike riding, Julie said she was up for that and has done that. Some other things that I can suggest are miniature golf if it happens to be open. It's a social distance sport. Just wear your gloves, bring a, a wipe and sanitize the equipment. Um, Al Fresco Dining, a lot of restaurants are open just on their patios or they've expanded onto the sidewalks or the parking lots. It can be a fun date to go with someone or you can have food delivered at home and have Al Fresco Dining on your patio. Uh, one couple I worked with actually fell in love at a dog park. So dog park dates, you know, there's puppy love, there's something to be said about that and making some s'mores, you know, making a campfire, going someplace where you can either make a campfire or they have a fire pit. And it's kind of fun just going back into your childhood and getting the Hershey bars and the marshmallows and the graham crackers and have a s'mores date, because that's a date to remember. Farmers markets are considered essential. So they're on weekends, a lot of people are going to the farmers market, they're picking up some fun, colorful fruit, and then they're going home and they're making a meal together. Drive-in movies, these pop-ups, they're on rooftops of malls. All, they're all being revived. Lots of old fun movies, comedy movies. The movie Palm Springs this summer it was a big hit. That was in a several drive-ins. So if you can get a ticket to a drive-in movie or go to a pop-up, it can make a fun day. It's, it's just throwback. And of course, Netflix and binge, that's online and offline. Lots of people just want to stay home and you know watch their favorite show or re-watch some other shows. So make a list of movies and shows that you just haven't had time to watch before and binge watch the season together and it's fun to compare notes. And for those of you who prefer staying at home, working out together can be a lot of fun. Building up a sweat, get out a yoga mat if you have some free weights and pick out a workout you can look at it, find YouTube videos, or you can do live streams and sign up for a class together. And, you know, there's something about those endorphins and working out together and building up a sweat that can make a fun virtual date. Uh, some people I've worked with have actually decided on the same dinner, the same dinner menu, and they've sent each other recipes and ingredients, and they've cooked dinner, and then they've hopped on a video chat and had dinner together, lit some candles as if they were at a restaurant. It's fun to play games. Words with Friends is still really super popular. Uh, play Quarantine Bingo. I mean, there's just a lot of fun things that you can do to just laugh a little bit. It's time to really laugh. And although I love to talk about love all the time, Arthur Aaron's questions, and there was a great article in the New York Times, it's a list of questions where you can fall in love with someone just by answering these questions. And I'll send a link to everybody after this is over to be able to access those questions. A fun popular date is taking a walk while you're by yourself, having a video chat with 
your date who's also taking a walk. And then you can take your phone and you can sort of show them the surroundings where you're at. And you can just take a little two mile walk together alone. Going on virtual picnic, that's also a lot of fun. You can set the background and you can bring picnic food in, cheese and crackers, bottle of wine, and just create a virtual background and pretend you're both in a pretty picnic area. We talked about you know, not being able to meet somebody because you can't get on an airplane and they're in another country. But these days there are tours that you can take all around the world, whether you're going to museums or whether you're going to parks, there's an opportunity to see these virtual tours of national monuments, you name it. So grab your passport and pick a stamp and decide where you want to travel with your date while you're staying at home. And for those of you who love wine or champagne or something bubbly, wine tasting is really a lot of fun. If you can both get the same bottle of wine delivered and you can get it delivered, there's a lot of different companies that are doing deliveries and wine tasting you can have a sample of different wines and your day can have the same sample. And then you can compare notes and see what you like. And then of course, even if you're apart, you can Netflix and binge and use the app. It's actually a Google Chrome extension called Netflix Party. And you can watch the same shows on Netflix at the same time. Or of course, there are many other apps that you can, you can actually stream together. And uh, that's what everybody's doing now. We're just watching a lot of content. So now it's time for the Q&A. And last time, as I said, we had over 30 questions. Zach is moderating. And this is an opportunity for you to just reach out to me and ask any question you possibly want. And uh, I'd be happy to answer them right here. And I'm sure if your question, uh, it might be something in someone else's thinking that as well. And I just want to reiterate uh, what Julie said. It's not often that you get a chance to, op to open up uh, the field to questions uh, and get them answered by a dating expert for free. So I really, really would encourage all of you, if you have any dating questions, anything at all, keep it clean. Um, try not to stood puddle too much, but we have some really good ones to start. Um, an anonymous attendee asks, what do you say after a video date or an in-person date if you're not interested in seeing the person again? Okay, this is the let them down phone call or the let them down message. If you realize at the end of your date that you just don't have a lot in common and there's just no chemistry, it's just not flowing, what you need to do is exit gracefully. You know, there's something called, you know, zumping we talked about before and that's being dumped on Zoom. Um, you know, don't be that person who's something someone. Just say, I really enjoyed, you know, getting to know you and I appreciate the time that you took to get to meet today or chat today. Uh, but I just don't think we have enough in common for a serious relationship and that's what I'm looking for right now. Um, but I wish you the best and I thank you for your time. And on a similar uh, note, Alan, in the chat asks, how do you find someone to date? People ignore you and don't respond to your inquiries. And I think uh, that's asking, especially uh, on a dating app or something similar. Hi, Alan. Um, just so you know, most men have the same concern and the same frustration that you have, is that they write to 10 women and maybe one person will write back. And the reality is, is it is a numbers game. You don't know if the person you're writing to is, is a paying member, a premium member who actually has the ability to read your emails. Um, you don't know whether they met someone else and forgot to take their profile down. And so there are a variety of reasons why people don't write back. And I think it's just all you really need to do is handle the rejection by just writing more messages to people that you really think you have enough in common with. And um, we're not looking for 100 people to write back to you. We're just looking for that one or two people that really you will click with. And this, this question actually came to me in an email. Um, the, the person asks, I am a four-year widow with three married children. Personally, I have experienced warmer relationships with fellow widowers, widowers, excuse me, I find that these men are in a rush to find a suitable companion simply because they don't want to be very alone. 
I would like to have a companion as well, but I don't want to feel pressured. Do you have any advice? Okay. Well, hello, Anonymous. I, I, I gather you're a female and you're widowed and you connecting with people that also have had that same you know, tragedy that you've dealt with. Here's the thing. Most men do want to reconnect. And you know, if you look closely at other situations or bereavement groups, you will see that the men couple up quicker. And often they will get married within a year. And that is because men are just, you know, they, they live longer, they're happier when they're married. A lot of women become very independent and they love their friends and they're not so quick to you know, rush into marriage again because they're focusing on their family and their children and their grandchildren and maybe work or things like that. So when you meet someone that you could see is a little needy and is rushing to the altar, just let them know that you're not on that same time pattern and that you, know, you would like to meet someone and have that same goal, but that you're taking more time to mourn. So Svi, Svi in the chat asks, my current date is from Canada. We click and have been speaking together for two weeks. She's scared to travel due to COVID. How do we overcome these challenges? We decided we must meet and take it to the next level in person because virtual dating is ruining things. Well, hi, Svi, and I'm really glad you met somebody that you connected with. And it must, have been, it must be really an exciting two weeks so far. Uh, if you look at what's happening in Canada right now, they have a border um, kind of a border crossing, I think, rule right now where you can't cross the border until September 20th, 22nd. So right now we're in August and that's a rolling 30 day decision that, that their health department makes. So if you think about it, the excitement of the last two weeks and in two weeks from now, it's going to be September. Um, maybe by the end of September, you will have a chance to actually cross the border and meet each other in person. So I always say patience is a virtue and the best things in life are worth waiting for. And it sounds like your match is worth waiting for at least for another month. So John asks, I'm middle-aged. What should I say when someone on a dating site asks me, why haven't you been married? Oh, that curse about have you been married or have you been divorced? Yeah, there are women that, you know, put on their bucket list when we talk about deal breakers. I will not date someone who's never been married. And we don't know the circumstances because there are some really great men out there who were um, maybe in relationships for 10 years with someone and they decided and they lived together and they decided not to get married. But it was the same thing as a marriage without the piece of paper. So um, you shouldn't be kicked to the curb for not marrying the wrong person. If anything, you should let them know that you just hadn't met the right person and you didn't want to make a mistake and that you very much look forward to finding somebody that's amazing and a new love that you can spend the rest of your life with. And look at it as a positive. You didn't have to go through a really rocky divorce. So the next question we have also came to me via email and they ask, how does one get into dating in the first place when the person who they've contacted hasn't even replied yet? Um, they haven't, if they haven't even replied just to say they're sorry or that it wouldn't work and there's too much rudeness out here, how do we stop it? Well, hello anonymous and I gotta tell you, uh, we can't control the behavior of others. We can only control the way that we respond to people. And I think the more people that will take the time to respond to somebody, even if they're not interested, just so they don't leave somebody hanging, the better off we'll be. But that's not always going to happen. And I think it's also important for you not to put all of your eggs in one basket for one potential date. If this person hasn't responded to you, you're not dating. You just sent a message as if you sent it Pony Express and it hasn't received and they haven't received it yet. And if they were truly interested and they were logging in daily, they'd see your message and they would write back. And if they can't value your time, you need to use your time more wisely and write to more people and to someone who would be interested in meeting someone just like you. Darren in the chat asks, a date is tough enough as it is going out with, without mask, worrying about COVID, etc. Uh, it's all such extra stress. 
how do you know if you should wait or just start now? Well, you know, whether you should start dating or wait, it's a question that everybody asks themselves. And if we can roll back to what we discussed in the very beginning of this webinar, we had the poll. And the poll had very few people, I think it was 15% that said that they were putting dating on hold with about 80% saying that they're ready for a long-term meaningful relationship. So when you look at the tremendous gap between those two numbers, I say don't put dating on hold. Um, people meet all the time. I mean, I just found out about somebody else who's now in a relationship and has a boyfriend and they only met five days ago and they're exclusive. So every day, every hour of the day, somebody new may arrive in your inbox with a really interesting message. I think you need to take dating seriously now. And dating during a pandemic, we need to toss up the words of, in a pandemic and just call it dating safely. Because that's what we need to do now, is we need to date safely. And rather saying you know, online dating, offline dating, virtual dating, dating in person, the only thing that all of these terms have in common is that you're dating. So we got a question. I really, I really love this question. Um, Sharon in the chat asks, do you have any special tips for single parents? I'm a middle-aged widow with an eight-year-old who just signed up for dating apps. Hi, Sharon. Thanks for joining the webinar. Uh, we have so many new singles that I would say in the boomer age, I don't like to say middle age because it kind of sounds like middle age and then over the hill. And as I said, the couple who I just talked about who met last week and are madly in love uh, and they're social distance dating now and they're exclusive after five days, <laughs> she's 85 and he's 80. <laughs> so, uh, and, and his wife passed away recently and her husband passed away a year ago. So you know, she's in a situation where, this is a situation where, you know, there's no expiration date on, on, a, on dating. And I think that the confidence that you have to really portray is that you are the prize at whatever age level you're at. As I said, you know, hearing this heartwarming story about two widows that met in their 80s, you know, it just warms my heart. So you're younger than that from what I can tell. And you've got a family and you've got other priorities and you need to sort of juggle everything. But there are so many other people online that have similar situations to you. And these blended families um, are something that you need to ease into, but there's something that a lot of people welcome with open arms. I hope that answered your question. We have another question from an anonymous attendee asking, how do you handle a stress bearing situation where you have to initiate the majority of date planning and phone calls with the person you are dating? Oh my gosh. You know, dating is not a one way street. You know, it's, dating is about a partnership. And so if you're doing all of the heavy lifting and you're planning everything and you're scheduling the time and you're confirming via text and you're picking out what to do and what time of day you're going somewhere, it's exhausting. And so after the first date or the first two dates, it's really up to the other person to say, hey, I've got a great idea. And maybe it's going to that pop-up dine-in movie theater I was talking about earlier, or maybe it's going on a social distance walk. But the fact is, if you feel like you're doing the heavy lifting, take a pause and just say, hey, let's take turns. What if I suggest this one and then you suggest the next one and make it playful and like a game and put some of the uh, burden on the other person to step up to the plate or not? So I know you touched on this in, a, in another question, but Ra Raquel wants to hear your thoughts uh, on someone who believes that single men who are over 50 and have not yet been married, um, that something is not right with them. Uh, oh, Raquel, I know that that's one of those, um, one of those stigmas that just seems to stick. But, you know, you need to ask yourself, would you rather be with somebody who's been divorced three times at 50 or someone who's waiting for the right one and has no baggage and, and you know, doesn't have an ex-wife and doesn't have spousal support and doesn't have children every other weekend. You know, give somebody a chance. I love that answer. 
Um, <clears throat> so it looks like we have no more questions in the queue. I just want to remind everyone that our time is coming up here. So if you have a burning question, make sure you ask it. Um, I love I love what John has to say to Raquel. Uh, someone who's 50 and unmarried is undefeated. <laughs> yes, John, that, that does make a great point. And again, you know, I can't tell you how many guys tell me that that they feel insecure because they haven't been married before and they think they're going to be judged negatively by a woman. And in the reverse, I know some women who have never been married who are 50 and they change their status on their profiles to say divorced because they're afraid that no one is going to want them because they think that, well, no one else wanted her before, so why should I want her? And so I don't want to see a bunch of insecure people. We have to own our situations and Maybe somebody, you know, got their heart broken and wasn't ready to get remarried, or maybe they were just really too busy with their career um, building their castle, and they just didn't have time to get married. But I have seen first-time grooms in their 50s, 60s, and 70s. I even know a first-time groom in his 80s, and they're happily married. Okay, so I think, I think we're going to give it another minute or two if uh, you have a question you would like Julie to answer, anything uh, about dating online, dating in person, uh, dating in the heat of summer, anything. Um, the field think, is open. I think the most important thing that you need to remember is that this pandemic is not here forever. Parts of it might stay for many years to come. We don't know. We've never seen anything like this before. All we know is that we're just kind of going day to day, hour by hour. And if you're comfortable in communicating with someone and you prefer staying you know, online, then that's your choice. And no one is going to look down upon you for it. And if you meet someone who says, um, I'm only meeting in person, and if you don't want to meet me in person, then I don't want to meet you then they've just done you a favor because they don't care about your safety. So it's all about feeling safe, feeling secure, and knowing that you're just on this journey to find somebody to love and someone who will love you as well. Okay, is that it with the question, Zach? Yeah, I think, I think we're gonna close the polls here. Um, okay, um, if you want a copy of this presentation, please, uh, you know, send an email to me. I'm Julie at juliespira.com. You can follow me on social media at Julie Spira. And um, I'm on LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter and Instagram at Julie Spira. My sites are cyberdatingexpert.com where you'll get the weekly flirt newsletter with some dating advice and dating in the age of covid19.com for COVID specific quarantine dating relationships. And right now it may seem like a confusing time, but love will not get kicked to the curb, pandemic or not. Thank you, Julie. Thank you all of you who spent the last hour with us today on JWED Live. Um, please go visit Julie uh, on her website or email her if you have any questions. Um, and if you haven't already, sign up for JWED. Uh, we have a mobile app and there's also a desktop app and um, thank you for spending the time with us. I hope Julie uh, was able to answer your questions and make you feel more comfortable with the, the dating landscape right now, a very difficult dating, dating landscape. Um, and I hope to see you all next time on the next JWED Live. Thank you all very much. Thank you.